I believe that God has a dream for us as a church, for us as a world, for you as men and women, children, youth, older people, no matter who we are, God has a dream for us. And God's dream for us is always good. In fact, it's wonderful. God is good. And God wants the goodness of God to flow down from heaven into your life and mind and to give us peace. That's what Isaiah was talking about in the second chapter. That from the mountain of God, that God's presence would be established on planet Earth. In one of the Psalms, Psalm 122, the psalmist writes, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's God's dream. Is that all God's people from all over the earth, from many lands and many nations, would come together and allow God's people to come and pray and to give thanks. In fact, that's what Jesus said in Mark's gospel concerning the temple. He said, my dream is that God's house would be a house of prayer for all the nations. And then he looked at the people and he said, but you have made it a den of robbers. And in Mark's gospel, that's when Jesus cleanses the temple. God's dream is that we live together in peace. God's dream for your life is that you have abundance. That you live in the power of the Holy Spirit. That you begin to wake up from the slumber of the world around you and you begin to live in peace. In Romans chapter 13, Paul writes, Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. You see, Paul had a dream for the early church. He wanted them to wake up from their slumber. He wanted them to be the mighty, peaceful, powerful people of God. Paul writes, Salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us lay aside then the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not reveling in, in drunkenness nor in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God wants us, as the people of God, to dream again. To dream of what it is that God wants us to be as human beings. God has great expectations for us. God's dreams are not paltry. God's dreams are not that, well, I just dreamed that they might have a pretty good life. God's dream is that you have an abundant life. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. And so God wants the world to be filled with abundance. God wants us to have joy in our hearts. 
Does that mean there won't be any hardship in the world? Well, the last time I looked, there is hardship in the world. There's all kinds of brokenness in the world everywhere we look. And yet God is more powerful than the brokenness in the world around us. And God wants you and I to be filled with that kind of abundance. And that's what Advent is all about. God has a dream for us, for you. Sometimes our dreams become clouded. We can't see as well as we ought to see. That's why I wear glasses. That's why I just lost my microphone. You see, see the world is sometimes broken. <laughs> and I don't have Liza to put this on. And she, and she does a much better job than I do. <laughs> Paul says, we see through a glass darkly. And only then do we see face to face. In other words, life is not all the time what we want it to be. We run against roadblocks. There are issues in society that hold us down, that keep us from abundance. And Advent is a time when God says, wake up! Get ready! God has a dream. God's going to do something. It's not going to be you that do it. God's going to do it. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 36. About that day and hour, no one knows. In other words, I don't know what's going to happen in your life and mine. I'm not a predictor of the future. But I know that the future is in the hands of God. And that God wants us to be ready for it. To be prepared. About that day and hour no one knows. Neither the angels of the heaven nor the Son. But only the Father. For as in the days of Noah. So it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. They knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and the one will be left. So keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So what does it mean to be prepared? To be ready for God's unexpected event. Now, in one respect, we all know what's coming. Because God's already sent his son Jesus into the world. But in many respects, we don't know what the rest of today will bring. Or what tomorrow may bring. Or next month. Or next year. We make our human plans. But we don't know. And yet what we do know. Is that God has something good. For you. 
and for me. In the midst of the darkness, the first candle of Advent, the light shines in the darkness. As I was thinking about this, I want you to think about three things. The first thing I want you to think about is that God wants people like you and me to be joyfully generous in the way we live. That means with our time, with our talent, with our money, and to be joyful about it. One of the things that we do in this church is we have a pledge card. If this church is going to succeed, it's not going to be because we have four million dollars in the bank. It's going to be because people like you and me give of our time, of our talent, and of our money. Because we believe that God has given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And so that's why we give. That's why we pledge. Because God has given so much for us. We also give in other ways. I know this Saturday at 7 o'clock, some of us are going to meet up here and we're going to go to Dallas and we're going to go to the bridge and we're going to serve breakfast to some indigent people in downtown Dallas. And then later in the month, we're going to go to Austin Street and we're going to cook some food and we're going to take it to Austin Street and we're going to feed the people at the Austin Street shelter. God wants us to be joyfully generous with our money and with our gifts to the needy who are among us. The second thing, if we're to wake up, which is what Romans and Matthew asks us to do, if we're to wake up We need to totally give our lives to a God whom we cannot see and who we cannot touch. God wants total commitment, not halfway. As I was going, looking over the, the walls of this church, I come across all kinds of things and I came across this picture it is an old picture of this church down in downtown Dallas and as I was reading this this is what this little plaque says we believe in the Bible as the inspired Word of God and we believe in God's Son Jesus Christ as the only Savior of mankind. If this church is going to wake up, you know, several Sundays ago we celebrated our 130th anniversary. If we're going to be around in the next 130 years, maybe we need to get our act together. Maybe we need to refocus on what is of ultimate concern in our lives. And what is of ultimate concern can't be us. I'm not ultimate. I don't know any preacher who's ultimate. Now, do you all know some preachers that are ultimate? I know some preachers who think they are. We're broken. And yet God loves us. And God wants the totality of our lives to be focused on God's Word 
and on God's Son, Jesus. And if we get our life together as a church, I believe that God will bless us. Because God has a dream for us. And that's what Advent is all about. Dreaming. God's dream. And God's dream begins and ends with Jesus and God's Word. The third thing that we need to wake up about, we need to begin to love one another deeply. The scripture says that love covers a multitude of human brokenness and sin. When we in the church begin to love one another, when we begin to love our neighbors as ourselves, when we begin to quit reacting to little piddly things that are wrong, and begin to love one another in the midst of our brokenness, maybe God can heal us. Not just maybe. God's the one that can heal us and bring us together and bring peace and bring joy. I can't do that. I'm not God. And neither can you. But God can do in us more than we could ever ask or think. So what is Advent about? Advent is about getting our life together. It's about waking up. It's about getting ready. For God has a dream. God's dream is Jesus living in you, in me, in us, reaching out to neighbors, friends, enemies, reaching in love with a power that is beyond my own human strength. And that's the question. Am I willing to dream with God? Am I willing to use my hands, my feet, my mind, my voice, my prayers? Am I willing to be God's child on planet Earth at Westminster Presbyterian Church? What is God calling you to do this Advent? But to believe that God has a dream and God wants us to catch that dream that's blowing in the wind. Are we ready? Are we willing? My only response, yes, Lord. I'm your child. Use me in any way that you want to. Let us bow for prayer. 
Father in heaven, we are thankful for your love and grace. We are thankful the way you have poured out your lifeblood for us, dying on the cross for our sin. Lord, give us courage to wake up and to allow our souls to cry out with a joyful shout that we're your children and that you're our good and gracious God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.